Ben Affleck seems to be in 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 sort of riding off into the sunset sunset with his uh, last portrayal of the Batman of Batman in uh, Flashpoint. He seems to have loved the experience and seems to have sort of this thought of this is what it was supposed to be type of situation. What what are your thoughts on his? Yeah, uh, no, I, I think I think there's definitely an element of of like. Yeah, like this is, I'm going out and I felt like I was able to do something I wasn't able to do in the other films and I'm in a better place personally, it sounds like. And I don't know, like I said, I defend having this movie on my my list because like, you, you know, if you hear him say that and like we see the rumors that Gaul might be in this and you're like, you know, there's just some... And then we could talk about the, you know, I don't, I think the Snyderverse is getting reset. I mean, we get to that. Oh, that I think is actually one of the bigger news items that's out there. I think Ezra Miller is going to get some serious backlash because of what he tweeted in terms of saying that they would never do that. Um, I absolutely think that is going to happen because I don't know how the studio is going to move forward unless they do it in some way. Yeah. But, you know, it just makes the movie have a little more intrigue around Where it. do you think the backlash is going to come from for, for Ezra? Well, the Snyder fans. I think they're going to be like... I see, I see what you're saying. So, like... I think he's lying to them because I think I think see he's saying like nobody could ever race, you know what was the Snyderverse, and I think what's going to happen is they're basically going to be like well, all of that happened in an alternate universe that isn't the real universe, yeah, that isn't canon, yeah. and I think the fans are going to absolutely come for him, yeah, after they find that out in the movie. That's my and then he and it's going to be like you know, scram, you know that sort of. Thing. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, well, yeah, whatever. I, I just, I did, but at the studio, I don't see how they can move forward if they're going to treat all of those films as if they're the, the roadmap. Because that's not where they want to go. If that's where they had wanted to go, they would have signed him to do more. So they yeah. clearly don't want to do that. So, yeah. Yeah. What are your, listen, when I, uh... I've heard of the name and he's seemingly a, a big time in the comics, but Ed Brubaker being a, a part of the Batman animated series, the Batman K Crusader animated series. Um, producers on that are Bruce Tim, Matt Reeves, yep. even JJ Abrams, right? Yep. So like big names, they're really like this is like they're living the dream. So but this is a but this is a Tim, Bruce Tim and Bruce Baker are they're the guys yeah. in the room day to day. Like Abrams has got his name behind it, and Matt Reeves has his name behind it. But in terms of like you know why you should be excited, it's those two guys. Yeah, yeah. We got the original Wolverine coming back. I hope this ages well, Brian. You know what I'm saying? Um, these are look, these are both um, these are similar projects, right? And that yeah. there's great danger to doing this if you do it poorly. Yeah. But I think I think Batman has more upside because of what I said the last time we talked about this, which is that because they can they can take this to R-rated or close to R if they want in a yeah. way that Disney Plus can't. Yeah, I think the upside of going back to the well here and you know doing something a little different but in the same vein, yeah, I actually I like that more than the odds that X Men '97 is as good or better than than what we remember. But we'll see. What sort of tweaks are you expecting? Well, they were kind of saying like they started to hint in that one article that it was going to be. They they were they had a, a vision for how they wanted to take the '90s version, update it technologically, and then tonally they wanted to shift like a couple of things. But I just said the thing that just stuck in my head is like when Bruce Tim first got the job, him saying like, "Well, I'm free to do anything I want. Like all the stuff that I couldn't do because this was on network television after school. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, can, I can do it now. And like, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, that just makes me makes me wonder. Now he's got a writer who's been immersed in you know these characters sort of the modern iteration of these characters i think it, yeah. you know, i think the upside's pretty high so would you mind the same sort of animation style no for x-men 
Oh, either show can do. If they wanted to do the exact same animation of either show, I'm fine with it. it because they work perfectly for those shows. The Batman kind of blocky, blocky sort of angular. For the Batman, yeah. Is, yeah, you can keep doing that. I, supposedly they are updating it, but like you can keep doing that. I still think the X Men stuff. You need to tweak a few things, but it's drawn really well. I mean, it was animated really well. You don't have to like reinvent that. Yeah, I'll be disappointed. Like, if it looks like What If, I'll kind of be disappointed. I'm like, oh, why are you doing this? Really? I thought What If looked great, but it's not. But that's not what I remember about the '90s X Men yeah. show. Yeah. But I, what I remember about the '90s X Men show is not necessarily the style animation, even though it's you know, I remember and I loved it as a kid, and I still. I've watched it and I'm like, wow, this is, you know, this is still great TV. Um, but I don't, I know towards the end of the X-Men run, the animation changed a bit. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if they changed the animation style, but, you know, have that similar sort of uh, nostalgic look of the previous uh, iteration. I don't know. We'll see, but um, certainly excited for that. Um, Andrew Garfield, listen, we we when we after we had our review of the Spider Man No Way Home, we said the MVP of that movie was Andrew Garfield, and that we wouldn't mind seeing Andrew Garfield in you know a continuation of his character, the Spider Man character in in. in in Amazing Spider-Man 3 and what he gets involved in and what life after this event looks like. Um, I don't know, Brian. It seems like the obvious choice, right? Like to get him in there because Andrew Garfield, I think, understands what this needs to be in order for it to be great. We can't go back and just put characters on screen and hope for the best sort of, you know what I'm saying? He wants quality. He wants a reason to go back. And I think they're, they're heading that way. what do you think? Well, it certainly seems more likely to happen. I mean, when you start getting the star saying he's open to it or the, who would be the star saying he's open to it, you know, the studio is about, look, this studio is about making money off of Spider-Man. That's what Sony is basically. And I don't think they'd pass up that opportunity if they thought they could. I think the conditions will be, because I don't think John Watts would direct this because he's too busy with Fantastic Four. But I think the conditions would be, can they get the writers from No Way Home to write for him? Which I think that might be possible. I don't know what else they're doing in the universe, but that would be a key. because They clearly understood how to tap into his character in No Way Home. So I think that would be one condition he'd probably be looking for is like something like that. Who's the writer? Who's the director? I ideally want the same people, some of the same creatives who worked on No Way Home to work on my movie. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, I pitched the idea that he would be the, 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 the bridge to Miles Morales in a way that Tom Holland couldn't. I think yeah. that's a good idea. I think that would be yeah. a way for Sony to kill two birds with one stone and get people really excited about their film yes. as a standalone Yes. Well, the Tom Holland, they figure out what they're going to do. With. Absolutely. So that's that's my pitch. I hope it happens. And it sounds like he's more than willing to do it. So, yeah, it definitely makes sense to have Miles Morales uh, take over in that world and not us having to wonder if he's going to meet Tom Holland, Spider-Man or uh, one of the Avengers or anything like that. He's in his own situation, uh, which it should be the focus should be on, on his character in, in that world and not on any other questions that we may have in the, within the MCU. Yeah. And the good news is no way, the way no way home left things, they kind of wrote the, prelude <clears throat> to the story for the movie already. Right. I mean, the sense of there, there's two aspects of his character that are easily explored in the new film, which is one is you could, you could start it, post No Way Home. So he's gone back to his earth after his experience in No Way Home. But then you could flash back in that movie to his dark days post Gwen I, where, which he references in the movie, which I think would be cool to see, right? This idea of like, what did Spider-Man Breaking Bad look like? Yeah. Where he couldn't save Gwen. Which would sort of validate 
his prior two films, even though they weren't loved, they would like connect back to those stories. Mm-hmm. And then you could then be even like, okay, here's where he is now having you know, been brought together with Tom Holland and Tobey Maguire and sort of found his way, found the light again. And then that leads into, you know, he meets Miles and you come up with who you want him to, who you want him to go up against. Um, and then go from there. So I don't know. I feel like they've actually already laid some groundwork for a compelling story. Uh, yeah. I would actually be disappointed if they then like went in a different direction and just made a, a true amazing Spider-Man three. Like that would actually kind of be like weird. I don't know why you do that. Yeah. Well, I just want to point out. Um, you sent me an article, and the article said Kevin Foggy says the MCU avoided using Doc Ock and Green Goblin before Spider Man No Way Home because they didn't think they could do better than Alfred Molina and William Defoe. This all proves the point of Charlie Cox, Vincent D'Onofrio, and all this recast talk. He's going to go back to what was doing. What was what was uh, I guess um, viewed upon to be the best iteration of a character, and if that dude is still around and available and capable of, of portraying that character, Kevin Feige is not going to go. I mean, it sucks for Wesley Snipes. But I don't think I don't think Kevin Feige would use Willem Dafoe and Alfred Molina to anchor. Right, he, the, the roles they were asked to do were not the centerpiece villain. Yeah, yeah. Multi picture run against Spider Man. This was still a supporting role. Yeah. But they feed off each other. They didn't have to be so. So, I, in that sense, I think, you know, the, the genius of, of Feige on display here, as we understand it, is really that this movie was not supposed to be this movie. Right? That's yeah. the fact that this was supposed to be the Cra- Spider Man versus Craven the Hunter movie was originally what that's what the writers said this was supposed to be. Wow. Okay. And they proposed the No Way Home idea was supposed to be the fourth movie. Got it. And Feige basically was like, no, what? that's the third movie. Do that movie. Forget the Craven movie. Do that movie. And like we had all our doubts about whether they could pull this off. And again, like Kevin Feige is Kevin Feige and we're us. Because like he, <laughs> he knew that like we had the ingredients to make this movie work. Well, I mean, the, the I think the signature ingredient that I think you cannot do without and makes me wonder how far back were they thinking about this uh, Mozo multiverse? You can't do this movie without the multiverse. Which is why and, it was supposed to come after Doctor Strange originally, right? So it actually okay. got even harder to pull off once yes. COVID screwed up the, the calendar. And quite honestly, who knows what the discussion was about Sony keeping this date you know, for all we know, Kevin might have wanted to push Spider-Man No Way Home into 2022 behind Doctor Strange. And Sony was like, well, no, we need it and we need the money now. You know, you never know how that went down. But writers have acknowledged it made them write Doctor Strange differently as a result. And, and you're right. Like, it, it was a challenge to really introduce multiverse through this more so than through Doctor Strange 2. Yeah. Oh, so much going on, man. So much going on in the world. I do think they caught a break, though, because, like, this, these writers would not have known anything about Loki. Yeah. And I think one thing, Loki did them a solid because Loki was so good at breaking down the rule, the basic rules of multiverse that we got that months before this movie, and they didn't have to even think about that. So yeah. there's no way they would have known what the, the scripts for those look like. And because there's no connection between Spider Man and uh, the Spider Man verse, this Spider Verse and Loki. So, yeah. yeah. So, anyway, that's the one thing I think that really helped people not be like, the what? When it came to like all this crossing over. Yeah. Um, and finally, uh, Disney and Marvel Studios are really making a push for Eternals for best picture um, at the Oscars. And I'm like, Nah. <laughs> nah. I mean, I think they are making a push for No Way Home, correct? Yeah, I think No Way Home is a better case for this than Eternals. Oh, yeah. Though. Oh, yeah. Oh, which is oh, yeah. which is not what I would have told you six months ago. I think yeah. you know, 
Eternals being placed in November was by in part by design, I think, to put it close to the award cycle because they thought yeah. Chloe Zhao was going to deliver something that would be yeah. different enough to be in that category. It yeah. just wasn't good enough. It's unfortunate, like you said, there is a fantastic movie in this, and who knows whose vision would have worked best, but it seems someone, you know, the director got its way in. I think part of what's going on is, like, you know, we don't talk about, like, Academy Fair a lot, because it's not really, like, our genre most of the time, but yeah. this was a really down year for movies that were supposed to be Academy Award contenders. This is not a great year for that. And so I do think Disney uh, and Sony are smelling a little bit that because it is a down year, maybe we can push our film into at least the nominees, right? However, there, however many there's going to be, even if there's no chance yeah. that they're going to win. Um, I can't see it. And I, I would, if they, if they nominate Eternals over No Way Home, I'm just going to be like scratching my head and be like, what are the <laughs> people watch? But uh, but neither of them to me really are in the like that category of like you know of the Black Panther Dark you know, well Dark Knight should have been or even like I know that people go back to like Lord of the Rings like Lord of the Rings was incredible filmmaking for the time when they got nominated people have never seen something like that before so yeah, yeah I just I don't put these quite at that level not to go off on a tangent but I have to ask the question do you think and I think we've talked about it in the past and i think if you've watched the show long enough you know my take on the black panther being nominated for an oscar and i did they, they didn't win they just got nominated correct no yeah they didn't win you know i to be honest i didn't think black panther was that i mean i understand what it represented and i knew because of what it represented that people were going to come out for this film and it was a decent film but i don't think an oscar nomination was you know, I don't know what they the criteria criteria was for this film. It was a good film. It was a decent film, but it wasn't a oh my god film. I understand what it meant for people. I think it, that's I understand a big part what, of it, though. Yeah, yeah. And I think, and I, I mean, I think there's no one way to be nominated for best picture, but I do think it is uniquely culturally relevant. And I think that certainly you'd be justified as an Academy of voter in saying okay. that is a worthy reason to highlight. Because if you think about the Oscars ultimately as a chronicle of the history of movies, that's effective. Like whether you win or you get nominated, that's effectively what's on display. What did yeah. people care about the most in that year? What drew the attention of the auteurs in that year and so forth? So that's, I mean, the argument for No Way Home is that that is the movie that people cared about the most in the end because it's the movie most people most went to see. But no, I think Black Panther spanned that successfully. Like, yeah, it, it's an excellent film. I think it's a film that like Hollywood would never have dreamed of making 20 years earlier, right? I mean, like if we yeah. think about the history of Hollywood when it comes to representation and like you know, the, the cast of this movie, like how it's framed and how, how wide the reach was, that just is not a film that was possible in 20 yeah. years ago. So I do think the Academy was recognizing like that evolution of like, this movie is very good. It's very well made, but it's also going into a piece of the culture that we just haven't really seen explored in a blockbuster way like this before. And it, and it resonates. So yeah. I think it's defensible. Yeah. Um, you know, as I, said, I think it's weird because it's like a little bit weird. It says you make that point, Joker being the other one, which I don't think to me, Joker's not as a film, is not at that level. Joaquin Phoenix is at that level, and that's why yeah. the film got nominated. But to me, Joker is not a film that, like, 100 years from now, I'm going to remember that it happened, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So, like, the fact that this genre's two nominees for Best Picture are Black Panther and Joker, and they couldn't be farther apart, I find the Black Panther one far more defensible, personally. Than yeah. That. But that, you know, okay. just, yeah. Well, that's the news for you guys. And that's those are our thoughts on what's happening so far in the movie business, in the movies, TV. Um, 
very t- very interesting what's going on um and looking still looking forward to a lot of what's going to come this year and next 